Attachment of muscles. This is our first place to start. Straight in here with some content. So this is where you get your pen and paper out and you get going with these notes at the same time. So fascia is going to be a really important um, uh, basically connective tissue that we're going to talk about and that massively relates to our musculoskeletal system. We need to know this before we go on and talk about muscle structure because fascia has a massive part to play in all of our muscle structure and our muscles. And fascia is compo composed mainly of collagen fibers but it's kind of like a spider's web. So just imagine now that you're kind of standing and you walk yourself into a great big spider's web. Apologies if anybody's arachnophobic or, or scared of them at all so you literally just walk yourself into a spider web and you kind of encase yourself like you would um, wrap a chicken breast in uh, in cling film and put it in the fridge same kind of thing it's the cling film that goes around all of our muscles and it literally runs in loads of different directions and it's this kind of spider's web this kind of stocking that encases everything about our muscles and it basically converges and wraps together to create like this tendon at the end. So if you take the chicken breast example, wrapped in cling film, rather than folding over the ends really neatly, just pull them out slightly and curl around the edges and you've got a nice strong tail to either side. That's exactly what your muscle looks like. And it's just got these tendons now at the end. So that fascia envelopes around and becomes the tendons, which is all collagen. So the fascia is important because we need it to hold things together, like the cling film, and we need it in order to, um, to hold the strength of that muscle in the same plane that we need. Our tendons are there to attach our muscles on to our ligament, uh, onto our bones. So the tendons attach muscles to bones. And the way I remember these is that they hold on to the bone. So tendons hold on. That's how I remember it. Whether that helps you guys, I'm sure it will. Um, this is again mostly collagen. It's exactly the same as your fascia. It's just now strong. It's running in one direction now rather than all over the place, which means that it can be really strong, really tensile, so that when you contract your muscle, it can pull on these end bits of tendons to create movement. That's what we want. That's why we've got muscles going across joints, so that we can create some movement going on. Okay, and then the other parts that we need to know about before we get started on this in detail is about the origin and the insertion. Now, you've heard these words. You've heard them a, a, a million times before when you've been trying to revise and you're kind of going, oh, man, what is the origin and insertion of every single muscle? I will say now, if you guys get stuck on that, I literally have a whole module of that in the Revision Mastery. I thought it might be a bit dry for tonight to do, but, um, yes, there is a whole module on it, every single origin and insertion. So... This part is the origin is where that muscle originates. So where is it the stationary point where it attaches to the body? And this is the fixed end. So usually it's the side closest to your heart and it's the bit that's fixed. It's on the fixed end of it. And then the insertion is the other end of that muscle whereby it attaches to the moving bone. And it's usually furthest away from the heart. So, for example, on this bicep that you can see on this image, you can see the origin is right up here, um, right past the top of the, the humerus. You can see that the top of the humerus is kind of wrapping around and it goes just behind the collarbone. And it's literally sitting on a little nook just behind your collarbone and right on top of the, in the shoulder. And then it literally inserts past the elbow. We know it's got to go past the elbow because we want the elbow to move when we contract it. So it's got to go past it in order to pull on it. So that's a big giveaway and then you can see it just in, in shot just hanging in there on the radius so that's kind of a little overview of our, our fascia our tendons our origins and insertions just to kind of get some words thrown out there now just take a little swig of water have a deep breath and this is where we're going to go into some serious structure of skeletal muscle the reason why i chose this bit tonight is it's a question that comes up time and time again and it's uh, from learners that are learning but also from uh, exams and also it's a big step up from what you learn at level two potentially whereas some of the stuff at level three are quite similar isn't it like the heart etc some of it is quite similar but this bit is a bit of a step up because we need to know the ins and outs of our skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle isn't just one great big bulk it's not like when we look at a chicken breast and we just see one great big thing it's actually all broken up and I want you to think about Russian dolls so Russian dolls literally fit inside each other 
and they stack up, kind of like pop, 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 all stack up into one great big muscle in this case. Our muscle, if it was just one great big unit that could only contract in one way, just think how rubbish that would be if we suddenly needed to use that muscle in different ways or we strained that muscle or we overworked it and it's in the middle of, of, of um, healing. So it's at a point whereby it needs to have all these little different breakdowns in order to get to a point or to allow it to have that long-term uh, adaptability and that long-term sustainability in the muscle. So think about your muscle as actually a series of Russian dolls, and that will help you on this next part. So this is our muscle belly, and this is just like I was explaining to you a moment ago. The chicken breast, as we see it, covered in a lovely fascia, and then that fascia curls up at the end and becomes a tendon. Now that fascia that curls up at the end, this is the cling film, as that cling film goes around the outside, that's actually got a name. Now this is where it differs from level two, because you don't need to name it at level two, but now at level three we need to name it. So at level three, this is called epimysium. Now before you kind of go, oh man, big word, just want to break it down. If any of you have ever had to learn languages before, then, I mean, I'm rubbish languages actually, give me anatomy any time of the day. But really this one, I want you to think about breaking down the word. So if you can see epimysium on my screen, it's on the first bullet point. It's got epi at the beginning, and then it's got my, and then sium, okay? For purposes of this, just to help you kind of understand it, there might be some technicalities amiss, but the my, myo always relates to muscle, so myo is muscle, so like myocardium is the heart muscle, um, but myo is always muscle. And then for this purpose, just link sium to that uh, to the connective tissue around the outside the fascia. That's all we need to think about it for, for now. Now, mycium is fair enough, but for this big one around the outside, we're going to call that epimycium because it's epic. It is literally the biggest and largest bit of our connective fascia tissue that we have in a muscle. It's the largest, and that goes around the muscle belly. Good stuff. Okay, so then we've got the muscle belly. And then that muscle belly, remember I told you about Russian dolls? Good stuff. That muscle, that muscle belly is made up of lots of fascicles. Now, a fascicle is each one of these little bits that you can probably see on screen here now quite easily. And you can see it's kind of got more little bits inside of it, but it's this main shoot that's shooting out. And you can see this, on this example, there's five fascicles sitting in here. Now, this fascicle is basically just a compartment and that is covered in another connective tissue because in order to separate each of these compartments or bundles we need to kind of separate them so this is now like having lot like cutting your chicken breast into pieces and cling filming each of them before putting it into one great big cling film so it's about kind of keeping it all in together and keeping it in nice and close and these are classed as a fascicle so the connective tissue that goes around this is now called perimysium. And perimysium is a connective tissue, still fascia, same thing, but this time it covers the fascicle. It covers the fascicle. So this perimysium, again, look at the word, it's on the third bullet point down. Look at the word, it's got peri, then it's got my, remember myo is muscle. Then sium we said about is the connective tissue for this purposes. And then peri, how can we relate that? How can we make that stick in our head? Okay, I'm going with peri peri because I'm a big kind of Nando's fan. So let's chuck that in there. You always put the peri sauce in the middle of your wrap or in the middle of your chicken burger. You generally don't put it on the outside. So that's how we're going to remember this one. Is it literally your fascia that goes around the middle bit, the fascicles, is going to be called a perimysium. Peri peri goes in the middle of your sandwich. Love it. Then we go down one more tier, one more level again. And this is to this point here. Can you see this next bit that's just jutting out, the final part that's popping out from here? And this is going to be a muscle fiber. Now, a muscle fiber is also covered in a connective tissue. Now, this one's called endomycium. Now, endomycium 
again, look at the um, structure of it. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, fifth bullet point down. Have a little look at the word. Endo. And then you've got mycium. So remember, we said muscle is connective tissue. Lovely. We've got the muscle and the connective tissue. Then we've got endo. Endo, in this case, think end of the line. The smallest part is the end point. And this covers the muscle fiber. Now, before I go any further on any other parts of this in detail, I really just want to highlight the difference on your exams. Exams like to ask, for example, which connective tissue covers the muscle fibers? And obviously that would be endomycium. Or which muscle tissue covers the muscle belly? Oh, sorry, which connective tissue covers the muscle belly? That's always going to be epimycium. What they're looking for is, can you distinguish between muscle fiber, fascicle, and muscle belly? And can you link each of those to the type of connective tissue that goes around it? Nice, that's all they're asking you. And you've just then got to pick the right two. So you've got some nice strategies here to help you remember. Epimycin because it's epic, perimycin because your peri-peri goes in the middle, and endomycin because it's the end of the line. Now.